Hey, what's up everybody? It's your boy David and it is February 1st, 2015 and I'm coming at you with another free play mode rant. And the reason for this rant is because of something that I watched on one of my subscribed videos on YouTube. It was by Rich of Review Tech USA. If you haven't subscribed to his channel or watched any of his videos, I suggest you do so. He's a very great personality, has very good opinions on things, and I highly recommend him. Even though I don't agree with everything he says sometimes, I highly enjoy his work. So with that being said, uh, I was watching his latest video on Resident Evil 2 to have microtransactions. Uh, if you haven't seen it, there's a little video that you can click on so you can check out that video. I highly recommend it. And he brought up an interesting question later on in the video he asked is video game heading for a crash and for those who are kind of young and new to video gaming who've just gotten into video gaming within the last 15 or so years uh, there was a video game crash back in 1983 and I'm 34 years old so this is around the time where I just first started getting into video gaming uh, my mom purchased me an Atari VGS, not the 2600, because it was still the VGS at the time. And what had happened was, the uh, video game industry imploded on itself. It literally went down into the toilet, even though there were other video game consoles out at the time. In 1983, the Atari VGS was the console to have. It had 90% of the market share and a lot of people attribute the video game crash of 1983 to one game being made and that's E.T. for the Atari and while E.T. was the straw that broke the camel's back there were a lot of underlying factors that caused the great video game crash of 1983 to happen and video gaming for about the span of two years was persona non grata like the reason why my mom bought me an Atari is because it was cheap. Like, you could literally walk into a J.C. Penney's or a Woolworth's or a KB Toys or a Toys R Us and buy Atari games for 5 to $10 when they'd normally been between 35 and $40. And in 1983 terms, 35 to $40 for an Atari game was pretty damn expensive. So I was getting ass loads of Atari games for like five and ten dollars a pop. I remember my mom like every week or my dad every week or my cousins every week we just get Atari games. Like they were on clearance. They like stores were trying to get them out of the inventory. That's how bad it was. And video gaming did not come back into relevance in many parts of the world until 1985 when the Nintendo Entertainment System was released. The Nintendo Entertainment System, also known as the Famicom in Japan, was released in Japan in 1983, but due to the state of video gaming in the rest of the world, it wasn't brought out for two years later, and it was given a total redesign, and Rob the Robot was created because they needed a way to Trojan horse this thing into people's homes and to get retailers to carry it because retailers and video games it was a dirty word at the time retailers wanted nothing to do with video games so that being said I think video gaming is headed for another crash and I think it would be the best thing to happen to video gaming because let's explore where video gaming is right now and why I think it's headed that way the reason why I think it's headed for a crash is because you look at what's going on with the current generation and that's PlayStation 4, Xbox One and to a lesser extent the Wii U you're getting a lot of unfinished games you're getting a lot of games that need serious patches after release and you're getting a lot of games where you're being sold an incomplete game and I'll bring up some prime examples uh, EA Sports UFC is one of those games. Um, Assassin's Creed Unity is one of those games. Uh, Halo, the Master Chief Collections is one of those games. And 
quite a few games are like this in the current generation. You started to see this on the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3, but it's becoming more pre prevalent now with the PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. And also one other thing is that they'll sell you an incomplete game and sell you the remainder of the game as downloadable content like this is extra content that is supposed to enhance the game but when in actuality it's just the remainder of the game that wasn't finished when they had to ship it out to retail so they decided to make it downloadable content so they'll just give it to you at a later date for maybe ten to twenty dollars more after the fact and that's one thing I hate and I think this is going to alienate a lot of gamers going forward with this model because let me explain uh, one of my games that I'm currently playing that I like to play is EA Sports UFC I'm a huge UFC fan love mixed martial arts but when it was released back in April of 2014 it was a very broken and incomplete game you could see the framework was there and it had the potential to be a very good game but it was very glitch filled very broken very unbalanced game and through the work of many many patches and the most recent one came out a couple of weeks ago and it rebalanced everything uh, 22 additional characters have been released since the release of EA Sports UFC and these were intended to be uh, paid DLC characters but they gave them away in uh, free DLC because they recognized how broken and uh, messed up the game was and there was no way that they could charge for additional content with the game being in the state that it's in another game like that is Assassin's Creed Unity oh man when this game came out it was just a total clusterfuck and that's putting it mildly like this game was so broken you had main character falling through the floor of the map you had random NPCs appearing in cutscenes when they were not supposed to be there you had like entire skins disappearing and leaving nothing but the skeletal framework of characters and it was just a broken mess and Ubisoft should be ashamed of themselves for even allowing this to pass muster and be released to the public like when what you could call Assassin's Creed Unity it was essentially a paid beta like people actually paid to purchase like pay to play this game we're essentially beta testing the game for Ubisoft and even though Ubisoft said that well if you purchased the game along with the season pass we're gonna give you a free game and we're gonna make the DLC free for everybody else going forward that's just shouldn't have been allowed to happen in the first place another way that is going to turn off a lot of gamers and I think we're headed the another reason why I think we're headed to a video game crash is we're seeing a lot of freemium episodic games and what I mean by this is that games that you initially buy like a small chunk of and then you buy another chunk of the game and another chunk of the game and another chunk of the game and I don't like games being developed in piecemeal where you have to pay for additional parts of the game just if you're gonna do it like this at least do it like uh, I would say Killer Instinct for Xbox One has the correct idea where they're releasing the game in seasons and you're like entitled to every piece of content that is released in that season you're not buying it piecemeal like one chunk at a time and I appreciate Iron Galaxy and Microsoft and uh, who else made the game I forget the name escapes me off the top of my head but I appreciate how they are doing it I don't like how uh, Capcom is doing with Resident Evil Revelations 2 and I don't like how 
EA is doing it with some of their freemium games and it's just annoying and the last reason why I think we're headed to a video game crash is we're being nickel and dime to death with micro microtransactions and downloadable content downloadable content was the best and worst thing that could happen to video gaming and it started really picking up with the Xbox the original Xbox and PlayStation 2 where you saw downloadable content for games like PC games have had additional content for years that you could download or buy they would call them expansion packs but it was actually downloadable co what downloadable content is now and we're being nickel and dimed we're being nickel and dimed over every small thing like in Forza you can buy the car packs for like nine dollars and ninety nine cents and it gets you I think about seven or eight cars in this pack along with a track sometimes and in addition to a car pack you can also buy those same cars in the car pack individually for like a dollar a piece same thing in um, Gran, Gran Turismo for PlayStation 3 you can it's being piecemealed and you're just being nickel and dime to death these days where you spend sixty dollars for a game and then after the fact you're being nickel and dime for up to like twenty dollars and you end up spending eighty dollars on the game that you bought retail for sixty and it's not like you can re resell that digital content like once it's yours it's yours you can't pass it along to a friend like hey I'll give you this uh, DLC that's on my hard drive for like X amount of dollars and I, the reason why and now I'm gonna get into the reason why I think a video game crash would be a good thing is because right now I think creativity is being stifled among the big-time publishers and big-time uh, developers like you see a lot of creativity from these smaller independent developers but you see very little creativity and risk being taken by the big developers and big uh, publishers like the most creative game I've seen to date that has recently come out is uh, Sunset Overdrive uh, made by Microsoft and Insomniac Games on the Xbox One and the reason for this is like it would be perfect is because you would get rid of these big giant companies that are teetering on the brink but regurg re uh, regurgitating old content in order to stay relevant like companies like Capcom who've released Street Fighter 4 it'll be five times because Street Fighter 4 has come out four times on the Xbox One and PlayStation 3 and it's slated for an Xbox One and PlayStation 4 release so you're releasing the same game five times within the span of six years so that's just ridiculous and you'd also allow it would also allow some of these bigger companies like EA and Activision to not die off but drastically reduce their influence within the gaming sphere because I know those companies would survive a video game crash and they wouldn't emerge as the same companies they would have before the video game crash and you'd see the rise of a lot of independent developers and you'd see the rise of creativity again because these independent developers would be the leaders go coming out of the video game crash you'd also see uh, companies like Nintendo and to an extent Microsoft and Sony drastically reduced their roles in video gaming I think Nintendo would actually fall by the wayside giving their where they are right now in the current generation with the Nintendo Wii U as I discussed in my latest quick hit rant but I think you would see Microsoft and Sony lessen their grip so to speak and it will allow for them to become more creative in what they do going forward with video gaming and the general public would be accepting of something new they'd be more accepting of things like Kinect and PlayStation I 
and motion controls from the Wii U. They'd be more accepting of things like Oculus Rift and Sony VR and Microsoft's HoloLens, depending on how that's used in a gaming uh, medium. It would allow the video game industry to truly move forward and do some innovation because we'd finally see some risk being taken by these big companies as we saw in the early stages of the video game industry post video game crash you saw Sega Master System you saw the Nintendo Entertainment System taking risk you saw the Sega Genesis taking risk you saw the Super Nintendo taking risk you saw the TurboGrafx-16 taking risk you saw a lot more ingenuity and innovation in those days I think the innovation and ingenuity started to slow up when the move to optical media disc was coming about starting with the original PlayStation and Sega Saturn is when you generally start to see video games stop taking more risk like towards the end cycle of the PlayStation and Sega Saturn is when video gaming became this homogenous generic uh, pastime like yeah there are great g games out there but there's nothing really that surprises you anymore there's very little risk taking anymore and that saddens me so I, I truly do hope that in the near future the video game industry does come crashing down so we can see the rise of the third era of video gaming and see some innovation and some ingenuity and some risk being taken I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you enjoyed listening to my voice for about 18 minutes so if you like this video or don't like this video be sure to thumbs up or thumbs down it recommend it to your friends subscribe to the channel if you haven't and as always I hope you have a good day and this is David for the pre free play mode peace I'm out y'all